So recently I did a water splash tutorial and many of you were not satisfied. So this time I'm gonna make it very easy for you. Every step is gonna be explained to help you create this awesome product splash shot in Blender. So let's get started. If you wanna create realistic droplet simulations and condensation effects for your renders, H2O is the tool for you. I've made videos about it, you can watch it. And now let's get on with the tutorial. So I have this Blender scene, you can see this is Blender 3.61 the latest version. I'm gonna delete everything from my scene and paste my 3D model here. You can see this is a simple model that I've got and one more thing you need to keep in mind is the size of the object. So make sure the size of your product is something like 10 meters. Then the simulation will work perfectly fine. So this is a very important step you need to keep that in mind before doing any of that. Now I'm gonna add in a cube here and just scale it up like that. I'm gonna go to the object properties and in the viewport display we're gonna make it wire. And I have set a shortcut for this so when I hit J here I can change it. So you can do that too by right click and assign shortcut. Then you give it your shortcut. I'm gonna bring this cube up a little bit and this is it. Let's scale it up too. Now if you look at my domain, the size of my domain is something like 24 meters. So yeah, I'm just basically trying to tell you that size matters. Now let's position this cube in the right way, just like this. Scale it up a little bit more. And that's it. Now right here, let's shift A, add in a plane. And I'm gonna bring it back to the product just like this. I want the splash to go this way and just interact with the product like this. So that's what we're gonna do here. Now we're gonna push the fluid along the normals of the plane and you can see the plane is facing that way. So the fluid is gonna move like this. If it was facing this way, then it will move like that. So, so yeah, it's dependent on the normals. Now I'm gonna bring it right here, scale it up a little bit make sure to rotate it correctly by hitting double R. I'm gonna go to the physics tab, give it a fluid and make it flow. This is going to be liquid and this is gonna be geometry. So in the flow source there's a surface emission. I'm gonna make it 5. If you want less fluid you can bring it down, if you want more fluid in the uh, scene you can bring it up. Now if you want to push this liquid to the object just like that, we want some initial velocity. So for that, I'm just gonna turn that on, initial velocity, and the normal velocity is gonna be 100. So it will push the fluid along the normals of the plane. And I'm gonna select this cube, give it a fluid, make it a domain because our whole simulation is gonna be happening inside that. And the resolution is gonna be 128. Make sure to set the domain type to liquid. I'm gonna turn off all the border collisions and in the mesh, let's turn it on. In the particle radius, it's gonna be 1.6. So our fluid will look very thin and realistic. I'm gonna set the end frame to something like 150. This is going to be modular so that we can bake every part of the simulation separately. And is resumable, turn that on. I'm gonna hit J on this cube and make it wire so that I can see through it. So first I probably want to make this geometry better. So for that, what I want to do is I want to create a remeshed version of this bottle. So how am I gonna do that? Well, you can do that however you like to just create a cage mesh around this object. I want to make this bottle straight so that I can create a new mesh from that. And I'm gonna insert a rotation keyframe so that I can come back to its own rotation later. And I'm gonna go to frame two now hit alt r and now let's shift test cursor to selected shift add in a mesh circle and i'm going to bring this circle down scale it up hit tab and f to fill it e to extrude it up just like that and i'm going to hit i to inset that and hit e again to bring it up just like that and i'm going to select these this edge loop bring it down with g z and i'm going to select everything scale s shift z now we're gonna give it some loop cuts, just bring this number up and I'm gonna give it some loop cuts right here as well. 
give it some there. And let me just delete the last faces from the top and bottom. X, delete faces. Now we got this mesh. I'm gonna give it a shrink wrap modifier so that we can shrink wrap the surface onto the bottle. This is gonna be target normal object and select the target as the bottle here. We're gonna give it some offset to bring it back a little bit that way. But before that, let's get a subdivision surface, bring it up and bring down the offset until it's looking good. Yeah, offset up 0 0.005 worked fine. Now I'm gonna apply both of these modifiers, hit tab, select this edge loop, bring it up and F to fill it. Now bring it up a little bit more, just like that. Select this edge loop, bring it down a little bit and F to fill it. Now I'm gonna hit J and wire. Now I have parented my product to this empty and I'm gonna parent this circle that we just created to this empty as well. So control P and keep transform so that the cage is moving with the product just like this. Now I'm gonna come back to frame one so that we can get our initial rotation. Come back here and that's how it is. So you can give your product a an interesting rotation just like I did. It's rotated that way. And I'm gonna delete this rotation keyframe now because I don't need it. I'm gonna select the circle, hit tab, select everything, shift N to recalculate normals in case we have any problems. And I'm gonna go to the physics tab, give it a fluid, and this is gonna be an effector. The surface thickness is gonna be 0 0.04. And I think that's it. And I'm gonna select the domain and save the file first. This is gonna be water sim and now just bake the data now the bake is gonna take some time because we have given it 128 resolution divisions you can bring it down if you want to get a faster result for better results you need to give it a higher resolution and 128 worked fine for me now I don't want to bake the whole thing so I'm just gonna hit escape button to see if it actually worked or not and there we go let's see how this looks like Okay, you can see the fluid is pushing there, but it's going down afterwards. So we missed a small point here. I'm gonna free the bake, and on the domain, we're gonna come down here to the field weights and bring the gravity down to zero. So now it will not fall down. Now let's select the domain again. I'm gonna go to bake data. Now let's hit escape again to see how the bake looks like. And this is it. This looks pretty nice. Now I'm gonna try and bake a little bit of a mesh here too. So let's click bake mesh. Now let's escape that too. I'm gonna hit J here and make it solid so that we can see it. Right click shade smooth. We're gonna get a smooth modifier and make it 5. The repeat is gonna be 5. Now look at this. Let's play it. So this is how it looks initially. You can see it's very thin and it's, yeah, it's emerging from the surface, like from the middle areas and stuff like that. So it's looking like realistic. We haven't baked the whole thing. I think the plane is a little bit up, so we're missing the points right here. But this is looking interesting. I'm going to give it a quick material. So let's select that. Create a new material. It's going to be a glass VSTF. Give it zero roughness. IR is going to be 1.33. Let's go to the shading and I'm going to add in a volume absorption. Connect that to the volume. Let's get cycles, GPU compute. I'm going to go to the rendered view. Let's turn on the scene world. Really nice. Now, right here in the color, I'm going to give it something like this. Give it a full value right here and give it some density just like that. 
it looks very interesting but we're gonna we're gonna make it look better we need a good simulation let me just free all the data from the domain right here and hide the smooth modifier for now hit J and make it wire so I'm gonna select the plane bring it down a little bit rotate bring it down and that's it now let's go to initial velocity and right here let's play with the values a little bit more and make them look better so first of all I want the X velocity to be higher because we're gonna be moving the water along this side and this to make an average of that and bring it right here so on the x-axis when you hit n and right here in the location if I move it along the x-axis gx you can see it's going to a negative direction and I want to move the water right here so let's give it a negative 10 of x value I want to move it on the y-axis too so if I grab Y just like that, it's going on a positive direction. So the Y axis is going to be 8. And the Z axis is going to be 5. Now these values seem to be a little bit slower. So I'm going to come over here and multiply this 10 by 3. Multiply this 8 by 3 as well. And multiply this by 3 as well. And I'm going to select my cube again. Let's bring down the resolution divisions so that we can just preview our, our result and then bring it up later. So I'm going to make it 64 and bake data. Alright, this is going to be enough. So just hit escape and play that. I think this is looking very nice. Awesome. I'm going to free the data. And now what we're gonna do is give it some thing like something like 128 resolution divisions. This is perfect. Now just bake the data. Now before you bake the data, there's one more thing if you want to do it. Um, on the frame 50 or something, if you want to have like a fast splash and then a slow mo shot with that, you can just come over here to the time scale, insert a keyframe, and on 51 make the time scale something like 0.2 or 0.3 whatever works and insert the keyframe I'm gonna save the file and just bake the data so we have 150 frames right here and bake data I'm just gonna escape this bake on 104 or something but one thing you need to keep in mind if you want to get better results you only have to experiment with the resolution divisions and the speed of the whole thing like if I select my emitter plane right here the initial speeds you can bring them up down and change the values to get a result that you want but now let's play that this is looking good you can change the position and stuff like that to get a right kind of to get a better splash and now I'm gonna go to the domain and bake mesh as well so let's bake mesh now let's just escape that too hit J and make it solid and I'm gonna play this and see how this looks like okay I'm going to turn on my smooth modifier and this is how it looks like let's hide this plan for a bit and this is not playing in real time so it looks laggy but when you render it or do a report render animation it will look very smooth and if you go to the rendered view the fluid is looking awesome If this video helped, you can subscribe to the channel because I'm making more of these every week. And also, if you want to support this channel, you can you can join my Patreon and get all these project files as well. And I have also two of my products on my Patreon shop.
So be sure to check that out too, and I'll see you in my next tutorial.